Go to the Brighton Run this time next week. I hope it's as dry as what it was in 2019. Bit of a dilemma though. We're going to do a bit of maintenance on some cars this morning. Got two Brighton eligible cars here. Got a George Richards and a Northern, well, Silent Northern it was called. This car is registered to run. This one, I'm waiting to hear back from the Veteran Car Club to see if we can swap it around and run this one because I'm not 100% confident as yet in this car. Test drives recently, we've had a few problems. Carburetor fell off. The solder in here came away. Um, we've got it resoldered, remanufactured. Um, the gears, we've made this little gear indicators on here with the colours just to, uh, you know, just so you know what gear you're in because a lot of the time it was hard to tell what gear you were in. So I'm not going to do it in this car. I'm going to do it in this car. And this car's done it before. But before we can do it, we've got a few bits of maintenance we're going to have to do on it. Uh, the fuel's been in there for at least a year, so it's looking stale. Um, I did notice there was a broken fuel line, so we're going to rechange that. It's got two batteries on it, check the condition of them, recharge them, fill it with new fuel, check the water, grease it up, check the tyres. We're going to put some lights on. Um, but the lights, if you can call them lights, uh, just little cycle lamps, these. We just pop these on. On the front, that's all you need, apparently. And, of course, the giant poppy. We can't forget that, because uh, we can't forget what everything's about, can we? We'll start around the back, and lift this seat off. This gives you access to the fuel tank and the carburetor. The seat comes off. Right, there you go, there's the engine. Single cylinder, six and a half horsepower, water cooled. There's a the water tank. There's a the petrol tank, uh, drip fed oiler, large brass carburetor down there. Um, it's got no choke on the car, so how we choke it on the morning is we stick the rag in there and it, uh, it fires up straight away with the rag in. Pull the rag out and then she's okay. We've had a modern spark plug fitted, new adapter, modern spark plug, because we're having some issues with that. But we've got that sorted. So, right, we'll uh, start now and drain the fuel. Normally we do this in the workshop, but the workshop's full as you can see, can't get in and it's pouring down the rain. Right, we're going to take this, this fuel line off, because I noticed the other day, the flexible bit in it was, was uh, perished. We don't want a little thing, like a perished fuel line that costs about 50 pence to ruin the whole run. So this is the pipe that comes from the fuel tank to the carburetor. It's in copper and then it goes to to rubber, to a bit of flexible rubber. And we're going to now. What we're going to do is we're going to change this piece of pipe. But first I'm going to drain all the petrol out of it, out of the tank because it's been in here for a long time. There you go, drain that away. Right, that's all the fuel drained. Petal taps back off. I'm going to get this pipe off here and I'll show you the bit of damage that it's got. Just loosen this Jubilee clip. This car's chain drive into the differential. And that, what you see there, is actually the brake. It's got no brakes on the wheels, it's a transmission brake. So if that fails, you've basically got no brakes. So you've got to be really careful when you drive these things. Um, the way I slow it down is it's got a decompressor on the engine and that really helps, you know. Uh, and I wouldn't feel confident in driving it if it didn't have that decompressor. Right, we've got this pipe off now. And there, what I'll show you, was the split. I don't think it was right there. In fact, I just think it was still the rubber. This new, uh, this new ethanol free petrol will destroy these old cars, all the rubber components. Uh, this hasn't added in, but you know, this is just to give you an idea of what it will do anyway. It will destroy a lot of the rubber and a lot of the brass, the soldered components in the cars. So it's uh, not good. And that wasn't good either because that pipe just dropped out. 
So I'm so pleased we've took this off today because we would have had some problems with this, I think. We've got some new fuel line here. Just show you that split in a bit of light there it is. Like I say, might not have caused a problem, but 60 mile in a, in a car, that's 120 year olds nearly. You never know. And for the sake of a piece of pipe, it's definitely worth changing. Right, we'll just measure that out. And then just roughly there. And we'll cut that off. I drained the petrol on that car and really, I don't know whether it was necessary or not. There's a lot of these old cars, especially the early ones. That, the engines are basically just like a stationary engine. They'll run on anything. Right, let's see if we can get this back on. Um, pretty fiddly. Just one nut, I suppose. Just fit it all together nice and loose so we can get the shape because we don't want it catching anything. And there's a chain flying around down there and bits and pieces of stuff. We'll go underneath and, and fit it up from underneath. It goes around here. Uh, sadly, I've lost my light. Yeah, that's gone. Get that pipe pushed on there. Make sure that's clean and everything, which it seems to be. Yeah, the top one's okay. Get that other touch, it doesn't want to be too tight. And like I say, these also vibrate a lot. So if you, if you tend to fasten everything up really tight, there's no giving anything. And the, uh, the little solder joints tend to snap off. So I think that's okay. So what we're going to do now is we'll fill it up with fresh petrol, turn it on, check for leaks and do another couple of jobs on it. Right, so we'll put some fresh fuel in here. Um, I think this tank holds about three gallon. Um, we've got a little dipstick, which we carry here, a mart on. And then there you've got your little mart, a little wooden stick. It's, it's what people did in them days. You know, there's no fuel gauges, so you just got a stick and dip your tank with it. Most important thing on these cars is the lubrication. So you haven't got a sump, they've just got an oil dripper, which is basically, like I said before at the beginning of this video, it's like a stationary engine. So it's, it just drips oil onto the engine by a time dripper. So you've got a little dripper here, like you fill up a little pot, take that bung out, fill that with oil. That's basically a switch, a lever. When you fire it up, you open the lever, it's set to drip oil into the engine so i think it's set for about 10 you know every 10 seconds you get a drop of oil in there um we actually got the original manual with this car and it had uh, the timing procedure for the dripper but i think we've set this up so it's, it's over oiling instead of under oiling which is also a good thing right. that's full of petrol i'm going to go underneath turn the petrol on and hopefully we've got no drips let's have a look there's a pet on. What I'll probably do, I'll probably go up and tickle the carburetor. You can tickle the carburetor, this cable here goes to the front of the car. And basically, it just pushes the float down, which opens the valve in the top of here. You've got a little filter in here. It opens the valve in here and lets the petrol in. Go down, check again, make sure there's no leaks. Nothing there. Nothing there, that's good. While I'm down here, I'll just show you, we actually had a starter motor fitted to this car. In 1904, obviously, it didn't come with an electric starter motor. So we had this ring gear machined and fitted onto the side of the flywheel. And although the car was never hard to start, it's so much easier with an electric start. I think the starter motor they used was off a a Land Rover, a new shape Land Rover, high torque starter motor. And we've got the little battery box in there. And it just makes starting this so much easier. Right, I'll check the water. Basically, all I'm going to do here is dip my finger in. Uh, yeah, we're okay with water there, antifreeze. A lot of people run these on waterless coolants to stop them overheating, which I think is a good thing. 
but you've always got to carry waterless coolant with you. Right, because we thought we were doing the run in this car, I put all the emergency gear in this car. And what I mean by emergency gear, I mean fuel, oil, uh, you've got radiator wells, spare water, you've got petrol, you've got tyre wells, oil can which we need to fill the dripper up with, oil, so I'll put everything in here thinking we're taking this car but like I say last minute decision we're not, we're going to try and get, get in, ended with this one hopefully. Right, oil and time, like I say it doesn't have a conventional sump, it just has an oil, oiler that drips oil into the engine, you take this little bung out which is usually horrible to take out especially when the engine's red hot. There we go, obviously just self-explanatory, pump the oil in till it's full and that's it. Right, so that's basically everything on the back of here. I mean, it's just general maintenance we do, we're not doing any repairs, we're just making sure everything's looking okay, those hoses are okay, there are no splits in them, the cables are okay, nice and, nice, everything's nice and clean, everything's tight. So, with this car having an electric start, we have to put a big battery on and there's the battery in there it's 12 volt and basically all it does is start the car there's no charging system on the car so the car is total it's got total lost charging so when that battery's flat in effect the car'll stop uh, we'll also put another battery in here now this battery again needs charging uh, this battery purely runs a coolant fan that we fitted on the bottom of the radiator down here and that's just purely to run the fan so when the engine's under load sitting in traffic going up a big hill flick the switch switch here flick that and it does the job so we've got to make sure both these batteries is a good little battery tester here uh, didn't cost a lot of money cheap thing you get them on eBay, Amazon or whatever, but they're really handy. Clip it on, negative, positive, there you go. Battery test, 59% healthy, 70% charge, so it's coming up as a good battery, but we will trickle charge it. Right then, I'll just pop this on charge, so you've got your negative, and your positive. There. Make sure they've both got a good connection, they're not touching anything. As you can see, battery percentage, low, and we want that, obviously, to the top and um, we'll stick eight amps in it to start with and uh, see how it goes. Uh, that's me on the car in 2019 with Pat Reaper Sun. Right I'm going to go back to the engine again and I'm going to fill all these little greases up. Basically what these do is you unscrew them and you fill that little cup with grease and as you screw it down, it forces the grease onto the shaft. And we just fill it up with grease. This is the messy bit. So we'll just screw that down. Not too hard. But you don't want the thing dropping off. You just want it so you can feel the pressure of it shoving the grease onto the shaft. It also has those grease cups on the back of the axle. It has one on each side of the axle. And also on the differential, one on each side, it's one on there and one on there. Right, that's the last one in, just enough pressure like I say so we can feel the grease pushing into the bearing and we're going to do the, the grease points on the engine at the front of the car next. To get access to the engine, under the driver and passenger seat, you just take this off and there's the other half of the engine. Basically, this is the bottom end of the engine. This is your transmission lever, your two-speed gear bands, obviously your huge flywheel I was talking about before. And these are your little oil cups, your little grease cups on here. You've got a couple on here. You've also got a grease nipple on the water pump and a little greaser down here, which is to fill with grease. So we'll get all these greased up and we'll move on. All we're really doing is, is, is bare maintenance. This car's 
it's been rebuilt, it's it's running, it's actually up for sale at the minute. Uh, so we were just going through a few checks really, I wouldn't say it was maintenance, we were, just, we were really just checking everything that you would do before you went on a run, whether it's three mile or, or 300 mile. Right, so that's everything greased up. So this part of the engine now is done, the back part of the engine is done. Earlier in the day, we checked the wheel bearings and the, the, the wheels, they were okay. Well, that's the lights fitted, as much as you need. Um, hopefully, we'll be in Brighton before it gets dark. Right, before we start this, I want to give you a quick rundown on the controls of this little car. Basically, what we've got is a tiller to stay of the car. Now, a lot of people think this is difficult, but it's not. It's a really, really easy way to stay of the car once you get used to it. It's, you can get in really tight spaces with it. It's good for when you reverse and the control you feel on it is, is amazing. It's, it's, I actually prefer it to a steering wheel on a small car. Right, pedals, accelerator. That's your accelerator, but you've also got a hand throttle here. So you can set the throttle on your carburetor for starting on here. So you can set your tick over. You'll see if I move that, that moves. Because it's connected to the same thing. Brakes. Like I said before, you've only got one brake. And this is your foot brake and your hand brake all in one. It works on a ratchet system. So your brakes are on now and they're off. So they're either on or off. The pedal next to it is an exhauster. And basically what that does is it opens a flap on the exhaust and lets all the gases out of the engine quicker so the car goes faster. Useful for when you go up a hill. Um, but they had to put that on as an extra because back in the day, the cars were so noisy they were frightening animals. So we'll put this on. You know, once you got on an open country road, there was nothing there. Open that up, and your car takes off. Gives it a bit extra power, and it does work. This is just a bell. Moving over here, we've got the decompressor. What this does, it decompresses the engine. So it opens a valve on the top of the engine, so your engine doesn't have any compression. When you come to start it, if you're starting with the handle or the electric starter, Press the decompressor down, wind it over, lift the decompressor up, and she'll fire. Switch for the fan. There, this is the starter motor. Like I said before, you've got your hand throttle moving over here. This little gizmo, if you pull it out a couple of times, it tickles the carburetor so you don't have to keep lifting the seat off. Oiler, very important, it's off there and on there. This little switch here is a pull on and off. This is the ignition. Now what I'm going to do is, before we start the car, I'll pull this out and I'll let you hear the, the, the ignition. You can actually hear the trembler coils putting energy into the engine. Right, I've just wound that handle around there and you can actually hear the trembler coils. So that's a top dead centre. If I turn the handle a little bit further, it should go off and the pull off. This is the advanced retard ignition. It's very important that the ignition's slightly retarded when you start it. Uh, when you're running the car, the more you advance the ignition, the more power you get. So we know we've got ignition. We've turned the fuel on. Got a little bit of hand throttle on. I'm gonna wind it over now. Press the decompressor down and see if she'll start. Basically what we're doing, we're tickling the carburetor, we're flooding full of petrol. She stood for about three months, so I don't really expect her to fire up the first time. Like I say, we may have to put a cuff on the back of the car and show it to the other side. Well, there you go. Howdy, coffee. 
next week, London to Brighton. Hopefully, next time we see it, it'll be on the trailer and down to London. Bye-bye.